So you, you are offended by what happened at the Olympics opening ceremony. Well, get in line because there's all kinds of people that have been offended by it. It's forks. Can't be an angry mob without pitchforks. And maybe in this moment you're trying to make heads or tails of the situation. How should I think of this thing as a Christian? Should I respond? Should I not say something? Should I say something? I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shock. Well, now since some of the initial shock has worn off, I do think there are deeper biblical concepts that we need to unpack here. So that's why I'm gonna show you today how to stop fitting your life into Christ and let Christ be your life on Church Door. Okay, here are some facts. Yes, the opening Olympic ceremony scene did look a lot like the Da Vinci painting of the Last Supper. But was this the aim of the Olympic organizers? I don't know. They say that it was actually a depiction of this painting. Very similar framing, right? Yet very different subject matter. The painting they were depicting was called the Feast of the Gods. Now, it's absolutely crazy to think that the organizers didn't see these similarities between the two paintings and that they weren't trying to provoke. But for us as Christians, what should it provoke in us? Is it disdain? Something ain't right. I mean, disdain for what? The world acting like the world? No, I think it should provoke our call to be in the world, but not of it. The Feasts of the Gods is a depiction of Greek gods dining together in indulgence and individualism, which is a direct picture of this fallen world. Gods in the image of man. Yet the picture the Last Supper paints is a different one. One that is gathered around the one, the one that we should all be conformed into the image of, and that is the image of Christ. You see, the Last Supper is not about the individuals that are gathered around him. Christ is the very reason they gather. And that's what's so beautiful about this image. Christ is our common bond. Bond. James Bond. And that bond transcends the individual strengths and or weaknesses that each one of us bring to the table. So if the images you saw at the Olympics felt disjointed, it was because the image that you were seeing was distinctly different than the image Christ calls us into. Now Christians, before you pat yourself on the back and move on from this disaster, we too have to remember we also do this. We try to cram Christ into our existence rather than let him be our existence. We see this really distinctly pronounced in cultural Christianity. People who rep Christian symbols, Christian language, have Bible verses painted all over their wall. She's not a Christian! Yet they are not radically abandoning themselves and their own desires. They don't leave those behind to follow the one that they're claiming allegiance to. That's why I'm calling today's message, stop fitting your life into Christ and let Christ be your life. It is a high call for those who claim to be a Christ follower to remember what they're being called to. If we as Christians keep falling into the cultural trap of indulgence and individualism, we will continue to fall victim to the chaos that it promotes in our lives, in our churches, and in our communities. You see, this way of living provides no glue. There's no transcendent purpose that we all can aspire to. It's just everyone stepping all over everyone. That's why in Philippians 2, Paul encourages the church to overcome this obstacle. And by doing this, that ultimately we are pleasing God. He says it like this, complete my joy by being of the same mind having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you not look to his own interest, but also to the interest of others, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted himself and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So if you're gonna stop fitting your life into Christ and let Christ be your life, you must first be in sync. Well, not the boy band in sync, but synchronized spiritually in sync with our fellow brother and sister in Christ. The word used here is sympsychos. This word means being united in the deepest parts of our being, our very souls. It's hard enough to stay in sync physically, right? I mean, just think about synchronized swimming or synchronized diving. Think about how much practice has to be put in to perfectly be in sync, diving off a board together in perfect harmony, 33 feet in the air. But listen, if that's hard, being in sync spiritually with other believers is even harder. So how do we stay in sync? Well, Paul puts it like this, get over your way and do it Christ's way. Well, here's the thing, Christian, your way is not better. Have you ever thought like this? Well, if everyone would just listen to me, things would be a whole lot easier. Oftentimes we give ourselves way too much credit when it comes to right living. There are many times that we think that our way is the right way, but in the end, we're just looking out for our own best personal interest, not what's best for our brother or sister in Christ. So Paul says the way you get over yourself is by putting on the mind of Christ. The word he uses here to describe that action is this, kenosis, and that Greek word means emptied. To be of Christ's mind is to do what he did. And ultimately he gave all of himself sacrificially. Now who did he do that for? He did for people who didn't deserve it, sinners like you and me. Therefore, when we experience moments in our world like what happened at the Olympic ceremony, we shouldn't look on it with disdain, but compassion, saying, Lord, please have mercy on them like you've had mercy on me. Bring them to the place where they too can empty themselves of all the indulgence, all of their individualism, just as you have emptied yourself for them. If you've never emptied yourself, today's your day to be aligned with God. And in doing so, you can be aligned with your brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a team of people here that wanna meet with you, they wanna pray with you. So you can reach us down in the chat or text prayer to the number you see coming up on the screen right now. Hey, do us a quick favor, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come right to you. Or go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step with Jesus. Hey, the fun doesn't have to end here, so do me a favor, click that button in the center of the screen, and let's continue hanging out for just a little bit longer. <laughs>